Hello and welcome to a new video about measurements. Dynamic behavior of measurement systems is our topic and today we are going to talk about a system first order, delay system first order. This is a typical problem in measurement technique that you know you have delays. I have explained this in the last video when we talked about the general of, of dynamic behavior. But now we're talking about a first order system. A first order system is a system which does have exactly one energy storage. Okay, so we need to overcome, fill up one energy storage so that we can get the correct measurement. It sounds now a little bit sophisticated. However, I have one example here. Here, this is one example. This is a temperature, temperature sensor. You know? To measure the correct temperature, this temperature sensor needs to have the same temperature, obviously needs to have the same temperature than the thing I'm going to measure. If it's there, then the, the temperature sensor needs to have the same temperature than the air. If it's water, it just needs to have the same temperature as the water. It needs simply to have the same temperature. This thing has a mass. Yeah? So whenever the temperature is changing, yeah, this mass, mass needs to be heated up or cooled down depending on the temperature change. Yeah? This mass is storing warmth energy. Okay, is storing heat. Okay, and I have to get rid of this heat or get more of this heat. Yeah? So this has exactly or this has one energy storage, the mass of the sensor, which needs to be overcome by the physical entity. Okay, this is a typical example of a first order system. Of course in reality we have more than one energy storage. However, we have one main one. That's the that's the important one. Yeah there's there's one a main one is that is the is the mass of the sensor. Alright? That's this. Okay? Typical example. There are also other examples. You know uh, there are are uh, operational amplifiers, there are uh, filter elements and so on, which also can lead to first order systems. So first order system has one they have one energy storage. Okay, and I need to fill up this energy storage. And now we want to see what is the response okay, of a first order system on a step. Huh? So actually our input value will have a certain we will have a certain value. Huh? Then this value will change. Huh? As an example of our temperature sensor, it would be I am uh, I don't know inside air conditioned and then I go outside and have 40 degree in summer. Huh? This is our input. All right. And now how is our output reacting? Our output, let's say before we were perfectly balanced. Yeah, we are at the same, the same value. All right. And now what is happening now? Now the the, the output will follow the input, but not fast enough. Yeah? It will start with a certain degree. Okay? So if the, if the temperature difference between the sensor and the, and the surroundings is high, we will heat up very fast. Okay? And the tangent at the beginning, here, that's the tangent at the beginning, we will hit the end value yeah, after a so-called time constant. Yeah? So this here, this time period is called tau. Yeah? Tau is the time constant. of the system. All right. If the mass is very low, yeah, 
Tau will be short because then we will heat it up easily. If the mass is very high, tau will be long. Yeah, then the 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 mass it takes a while to heat it up. Yeah, simply so tau is big if there are big storing capacities yeah, of this one energy storage, and tau is small if there are small storage cap capabilities. Yeah, so uh, big. Big storage, short, small storage. But the basic principle is always the same. So we will start up at, at the beginning. Okay. Here we have the, the change. This is delta xi. Okay, this is the change. Now, the output delta xo. Okay, is following the following calculation. It's delta xi. Okay. Multiplied by. One minus e raised by the power of minus d divided by tau. Okay. You probably know this formula yeah, from the charge or discharge of a capacitor. And it's no wonder that it is that case because you know if you charge how many energy storage has a capacitor? One, the capacitor, yeah. And this tau is determined, we also call the time constant there with the charging or discharging resistor and the capacity and the size of the capacitor. All right. So actually a cap charging and discharging a capacitor is a first order system, first order delay system. If we calculate this and see where we ending up after one tau. So if we are entering here one minus E, where is E? <laughs> ah, here. E raised by the power of minus one, yeah? because it's one time, one time tau. Tau divided by tau is minus one. Then we're ending up at 63.2%. Yeah? So here we have around 63% reached. Yeah? This is 0 0.632 multiplied by delta xi. What is the case after two taus? After two times the Zeit by time constant? 86. Three? It's around. This was the wrong button. 95%. And here we are at 99. After 5 tau, we are at 99. So here, what I have I said? 2 is around 86.5%. Here we have around 95%. Here we have 98.1%. Uh, and after 5 tau, we are at 99.2%. 99.3%. So we are there. Okay. And it looks like that. We will raise, we will start to raise with this, yeah? and then we will smooth down. All right. So this is a typical. Here I have not hit proper. So this is a typical huh? so here I have sixty three dot two percent. All right. 
After five tau, everything is finished. This is the step response. Here we have a band. We will start with a steepness in the beginning, yeah, which is determined by the time constant. All right, and then we will close. And after five times the time constant, yeah, we are there. We can say, okay. So this is this is one one system. Yeah. If we have a system with smaller storage cap capabilities, then it would look exactly the same, yeah. but we would go up faster simply. Yeah. But the basic behavior is the same. Yeah. This is smaller storage. Shorter tau. And if we have higher storage, then we would probably look like this somehow. Yeah. We will start very gentle. This here is bigger storage. Longer tau, longer time constant, right? But the basic, if we just zoom the time axis, yeah, change the scaling of the time axis, it would always look like that, yeah? depending just on this time constant. And the time constant, this is the characteristic value for a system first order. Yeah? So this is the characteristic value. If I know it's a system first order and I know the time constant, I know how the system first order is behaving. And I can read the time constant out of the step response by simply using this, yeah, or wait until we are there and then measure five times time constant. That are the two possibilities. Okay. So now we know what is a system first order. Yeah, we have one example. Yeah. Uh, then we also know the step response of the system first order. Yeah? And in next video, we are covering the frequency response of a system first order. So what if we are not applying a step to this sensor? What if we apply a change, periodic change, sign, form, change? Yeah? How is the measurement behaving? Okay. This we are going to talk about in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.